My name is Twyla Casador. I'm going to just briefly go over um, a project that we work with. It's the tra traditional Western Apache diet project. An overview of our project is based on elder interviews. We okay. So our, we're able to reconstruct 96 pre-reservation daily menus eight days per month and to conduct an initial tra traditional analysis of each of these menus. The initial analysis and interviews indicate that our ancestral diet and living the life that supplemented that diet kept us healthy and happy and living according to the natural rhythm and process of Nugo Sun, which is Mother Earth. We gathered highly diversified food from ecosystem ranging from 2,000 to 10,000 feet in elevation, including over 200 edible wild plant species, over 12 varieties of corn, squash, and nearly 50 species of mammal and birds. Wild plant food comprised of 40-60% of our total diet. Agriculture plants comprised of 25-50% of our total diet. And wild meat comprised of 20-40% to of our total diet. Our diet was extremely high in fiber, two times of the national USDA guidelines. High in protein, low in saturated fat. High in polyunsaturated fat, low in cholesterol, low in sodium high in B, C, K vitamins, calcium, zinc, and iron, sweet without processed sugars, rich in a variety of whole and wild food and supplements, filling with very lo little volume. That's just a brief overview of what we do. And I work with an amazing group of people in San Carlos, and I work with an anthrobotanist. His name is Seth Pelks. He's been with our tribe for a little more than 30 years. He has begun uh, working with our elders, and we're talking about food sustainability, uh, food knowledge, and, and um, revitalizing our traditional food waste. Uh, this is very amazing. I mean, I was like blown away listening to these two. I was, I'm like, okay, I'm in the wrong building. <laughs> so what, what we do is reintroduce food in a whole different way. We don't deal with agriculture. We don't deal with um, marketing. It's all going back to our roots, to who we are as indigenous people and where we're from, which is Nicholson, Sun, Mother Earth. That's where we're all from. And so working with our elders was to capture a lot of our traditional knowledge, which we were losing rapidly because of all of these changes came, that came upon us as indigenous people, which is like um, all these health disparities and sicknesses and so many things have occurred in the past hundred years than it did in the past thousand. And we're losing our elders faster. And that includes, we call it um, our language, our song, ceremony, our prayers, and our food waste. And all those knowledge we're losing quickly. So you're looking in the early 1800s, a 10 year old would have all that knowledge of the land. And you're looking at today due to how would you say, to religion, um, technology, gangs, drugs, um, alcoholism. How many of us carry those five seeds today? The language, or songs, or ceremonies, or prayer, or food waste. Very few people in each of our community does. And we're very fortunate to capture a lot of that knowledge from our elders that do carry those five seeds. So we're working with the elders and our community people was bringing that knowledge back into the community, which is of the four Western Apache Rhea tribes, which is um, Camp Verde, White Mountain, um, Hayson, and San Carlos, and working with all the elders in those areas and bringing back that knowledge back into community through harvesting. What I do is I, I, I go through all the interviews and I've been sitting in a lot of interviews since I first began. And what I do is extract all the food information. That's my only job. And extracting all the food information, when I first started, I didn't think much about. I knew my, a few of my traditional food. And we think about, gosh, how many food is out there? So when we start walking around learning, there's like 2,400, a little more than 2,400 plants out there has a name that has a patchy name, what it's used for, whether it's medicinal, whether it's edible, but rebringing that back to our young people to, so they can learn that 
So what, what I do is take people out hunting. We do a desert wood rat hunt in the wintertime. How many of us know what wood rats are? Okay. Raise your hand if you do. <laughs> okay. So going back to the time, this is a whole different approach to cultural and um, um, a way of teaching people about traditional food ways. And it's a whole different approach of addressing a lot of our health crisis in our communities. A lot of it, we have a lot of suicide, we have a lot of uh, addiction, we have depression, we have um, other health problems, health crisis in our community. But a lot of it's not using real traditional approaches in each community. And with those five that I was talking about, that I, I use, usually put five acorns in people's hand, which I didn't bring today. But when you spin all those five acorns in your hands, it pokes you really fast. And I will say that's a non-native approach to healing indigenous people, indigenous way of life. And hey, we're here to help you. We've got the answer. And you, they give you all these formats to follow. And that's the way they can measure their success in a non-Indigenous way. For me, it's taking a young person out hunting. And if they want to come back next year and go hunting again, that's success. But they can't measure it in that European concept. So it's very hard to separate the both when we're, we're working in our programs. Is, it's a whole different, a holistic real approach. So taking young people out hunting, you take a young person. I took a young person out hunting, and she comes home, and she, everybody knew where she went. Everybody knew where all these kids went, and they went home. And, goes, and her grandma says, where did you go today? Oh, I went um, glistia hunting. We call it glistia. And she goes, eh, did, you, did you kill it? And she'll say, yeah. She goes, did you eat it? She goes, yeah. And she goes, well, what did it taste like? She says, it tastes like chicken. <laughs> so grandma comes back with this dusty book on a shelf sitting there for decades because this was deemed poor people's food. You're, uh, it's how you say about And they bring this book off the shelf. Remember, this book sat there for decades because she was ashamed of her food at one time. Get off. We used to hunt it like this. We used to cook it like this. Your grandpa used to make it for us. We used to go here. Stories came back. Something, a magical something happened in that moment. And this young girl is so proud because, Grandma, you did? But this was a conversation that she put aside because if you couldn't buy it, you were poor. But yet she was so rich in knowledge. And a lot of our community is so rich in knowledge. If you can't buy it, you're poor. That's a concept we need to change today. To be happy. How do we teach our people to be happy? We don't teach our people to be happy. We teach them get more. You need more. And it's a little bit a different approach to holistic, realistic, indigenous healing, but it's an approach that we use with the Western Apache Diet Project. Is, we call it a state of gojon, a state of happiness. It, it had come, there's so many words in that little circle, but it makes you proud of who you are. You get up, I get up and I go, Hey, it's the end of Kushkan season. You want to go out and go collect all these. Um, I'm a forager, by the way. I forage full time. I forage from all seasons. Never Taco Tuesday. <laughs> and, but using this approach has been really beneficial to young people in our community. I, I take young, different age group of people to well, wood rat hunting. And it's, a, it's like watching a soccer game. How many of you guys watch soccer? Okay. Basketball. <laughs> okay. Football. 
Okay. So we all know sports. You chase that ball and you want that ball, right? That's the whole focus. So that's what these young people do. They go and chase the thing. It's like watching a game. It takes as long as a game sometimes to catch one of these one-pounder animals. And when you see them, you'll go, the girls will go around them and they go, oh, it's so cute. Boom. And they'll kill it. So I take different age groups out and different, different groups of young people out. So for the one person, she's my best hunter. Never fails. She gets us the most, probably like 10, 12 in a day. But this young girl was sexually molested in her home. She still lives in that home. But because of the way a lot of our system is in our, each of our communities, there's so much service you can provide to a person. She's one of those that didn't get those services. But how do you cope without medication? How do you cope without counseling? How do you cope when there's no one there to hold you? This young girl learned to cope by hunting. Takes her anger out, frustration, stress. She sweats, happy. Graduated high school, going to college now. She never had thoughts of suicide. She just never want to hurt nobody. It's a realistic approach, Mama, that a lot of us go through. My name is Twyla Casador. I'm a recovered addict, 17 years now. But the young girl went through, I went through, before I even went to kindergarten. I don't like water. Bad things happened to me in water. But I remember the smell before I went to the river. I could smell the willow. I could smell the dirt. I could taste the water. That's what kept me alive. I went through a dark moment. But going back to my elders is what helped me. I was going back to weaving. I want to learn how to weave. My auntie took me out. Oh, I like the smell of the willow. Then I see one day I seen this one tall white man. He works with all our elders. And this man knows him. <laughs> our chairman, Terry Rambler. I had to learn more. And which I did. I learned from some amazing elders. And what it did was it filled a void. Some of us have voids in our lives that we're trying to fill with something, alcohol, drugs, other things, just to feel whole. I start filling that void with the teachings of my elders, the food they were teaching me. I'm going to do something really quick, okay? I want all of you guys to stand up. And, and go say hi to two people you absolutely do not know. Don't say hi to a person you know. <laughs> and ask where they are from. And you got to learn a little bit more about each one, right? Slightly. But it's like that when I'm out foraging. I learn a plant's name. I learn where they're from. I learn what it's used for. There's every plant has a name. It has an indigenous name. It doesn't have a scientific name. It has a scientific name because they want to measure that stuff. It has an indigenous name that has a different meaning than what they already put in a book. But it has a name that we gave it, that we share on common ground. And, and we are all living on the same level. They're family, they're relative, they relate to us in some way. And so with that, that's what our project does, is we introduce people to food and it helps people heal. And we're looking for fundings. <laughs> so we're the Western, with the Western Apache Diet Project, and you can find me, I believe, we have information on here. And we are presently not funded by any, any programs or any, um, uh, we don't have any grants, but we measure success in a different way that other people don't measure in the way that we do. And we know what success is. It's the fact that someone wants to come and say, hey, 
I heard the pinions already in Santa Fe. <laughs> you know, that's a good thing. But they're keeping their mind on that calendar. There's a beautiful calendar back there. You guys are welcome to look at it or take. There's some calendar books back there that were developed by some young people, amazing artists in our community. And by the information given by our elders, they were able to really, really um, do a beautiful layout. You'll be surprised how smart young people are and how talented and gifted they are. So with that, thank you. Uh, Sean Ahia. Okay, so back to the data system. As Like I said again, I extract all the food information. We were able to create a, data, a database for each of these traditional food. So each of this is put into a category of four. The first one is in Apache, the second one is scientific, the next one is English, and what, how, what it's used for and how is it cooked and what do you do with it. And that's a data system that took about 30 years to, to actually develop and create. So it took a lot of work, and it's well, it's uh, open to our community members to have access to it, and it helps those that don't have um, elders or they don't have a auntie or relative to help reintroduce some food. If not, I go out on field trips three times a week and reintroduce people to food that they've never met. 